In this station here, guys, I will be showing how to make this into this. So basically, this is the section two of our remote shooting furnace. But before we get into that, I will just take out the data disk and uh, take an advice given to me by a commenter, Stian Storengren. Storengen, sorry. Uh, thank you very much for that comment, which would be just inserting the data disk and setting the external pressure setting to zero so that we don't really need to pressurize every single time when we're getting out. It makes complete sense. Thank you a ton for that, Stian. Let's test it out. Here we go. We depressurize and then since we do not need to pressurize, the doors open up. Imagine that. Awesome. There you save me another 20 seconds of, you know, pain. So thank you very much, Stian. Anyway, uh, one thing that became painfully obvious when I was testing is that you cannot remote make a remote furnace if the controls for opening up and activating the furnace don't work, meaning that we really need to replace this regular furnace with actually an advanced furnace. So that's something that I will be doing first. We have to remove those shoots and then we will be to need to just replace you. And there we have it. Advanced furnace. Amazing. Now we'll need to hook it up, but I think I'm actually just going to skip to that portion of the video and continue with the logic components as soon as this thing is properly hooked up. All right, so it's hooked up and as you can tell, I did not place the actual volume pump because this furnace has the volume pumps already built in. So the only thing that remains now is connecting this chutes and then we will be golden. All right, so let's put in the window. Oh crap, and we have a storm coming in. Okay, not something that I have planned, but it doesn't matter. Once we build here a window, we're done with the exterior part of the furnace anyway. So let's just go quickly inside. And now at least I can look forward to the storm because I have the big wind turbines. So they will be hopefully refilling my batteries completely. Amazing. I just love how the sound completely disappears once there's no atmosphere. Such a nice touch. All right, we've pressurized. Listen to the sound of our wind turbines whooshing. You know, according to the animation, so you would think that this uh, storm has come in, but actually it hasn't. So, Let's put the shoots back and let's start digging into the electronics for our brand new furnace. Yes. After all, that's what we are here to see. There we go, just emptying my inventory. By the way, the volume pump we should put together. All right. Deconstructing the window and we can start working on those logic chips. So now what we need to be building, we need to be building three displays and we're going to take consoles. So this is the first display. I'm going to use console monitors because they can fit nicely on the window. So one, two, three. Right. So here I'm going to have exact displays of temperature, pressure, and also 
the end product result in there. So that's why I'm putting the hash. Then we have gas display and another gas display. So like I said, it will be pressure, temperature and content. Let's just make them, you know, finish them up. All right, sounds great. Now we need to hook them up using cables. All right, let's see how do we place this. We take the logic switch. And I can obviously place the logic switch somewhere here in the middle so that it actually kind of looks cool. And it also resembles the, you know, the open lever for the advanced furnace, so why not? There we go. Now we need to use the cable. And of course the button to basically activate the process of uh, burning. That too, let's place it here. There we go. So what we need now is we need now to be able to create the another logic switch. And I'm thinking probably one or two because these logic switches will be the dials that will be controlling the pumps. But I'm not don't think we will be building them today. Maybe in the next episode. Who knows? There we go. So, let's just place it for the time being here. Now, let's hook this up. There we go. Connectivity. And this guy, we don't, we can use straight here because the data port is on this side. So we have to be careful to connect that one as well. Perfect. Then we need to hook up these monitors. They will essentially become the blood, uh, uh, well, bread and butter of what we do. So yeah, it's kind of important. So cabling it up. As you can see, a lot can be done from inside while a storm is raging. Not that we care really that much, but still. All right, then we go down with this one. Here we go, perfect. There we go. There we go, beautiful. So that's the monitors hooked up. And that leaves us plenty of room for the logic chips that are about to come. So let's place this in. We have, okay, data disk we have. So let's start renaming these panels one by one. All right, and it's going to advanced furnace and gonna take the pressure. All right, so I guess on this side, it, we will be doing exactly the same, except with the temperature. There we go. I always remember going from the inside out, which is the order that needs to be done, which is obviously the vent, the, the door, the vents, and then the other door and hash display setup. So this will hash will hopefully say what it is in the furnace that's currently cooking. There we go. Labeler, ah, oh, that's indispensable. So instead of console monitor, I'm gonna put furnace just so that we know furnace pressure is that amount. Here we put the only thing that it looks different, furnace production, so that somebody doesn't mistake it for something else. And here we have a temperature. Beautiful. 
The renaming process is also very important once you're building your own stuff because then in the logic chips you want to be referring to you know, the furnace activate rather than the button switch number 252569. So, yeah. And this lever will call furnace open because we want to be able to eject even stuff remotely from it. Okay, time to hook up some logic circuits and make all this thing operational now. First of all, we're gonna be placing a couple of logic reader now readers or writers yeah technically maybe it's a logic reader first to read the value but maybe we could get off just by placing a logic writer what do you think guys hmm should we try try first with a logic writer save us unnecessary logic readers yeah let's try let's try a logic writer first i have a good feeling about this all right so two logic writers one will be reading the activate button another one will be reading the um, open lever or lever i don't know how you what's the correct pronunciation if you don't you know put it out in, in the comments below all right let's hook this up there we go Come on, turn. Yeah, like this. Good. All right. We hook this up. We hook this up. And is that everything? Possibly. All right. Let's take the labeler and let's rename the chips. So you will be activate writer right and you shall be open writer there we go perfect all right so let's make the activate writer read the activate button so input value open writer furnace open nope Furnace activate, yes. That's the thing that it should be reading. The output, uh, why doesn't it allow me to select output? Hold on. Oh, because I haven't connected the output. Genius, yeah, all right. Fix it up, Gromforks. There we go, much better. Now it should allow me to select the, uh, the correct output, I assume. Let's just move this cable and screwdriver. Now, let's see. Output, not to the wall light, open gas mixer, nope. Furnace, product, furnace, yeah, furnace. No, no furnace, A advanced furnace should be. Airlock, yeah, everything is on this network. I don't like that idea. Okay, and we will be writing out to the activate, correct. So that should basically read the button and then when I press the button, it should activate. Okay, fair enough. Now the open writer should be reading the lever, which should be furnace open. So let's try and find that out. Why doesn't it want to read? Is it again because it's not connected? Oh, right. Once again, cabling problems. Yeah, that's a downside when you're working with cables, you don't see everything. So I think we haven't connected this really. Yeah, seems like it should be going, hold on, straight like this. There we go. I think now it will work correctly. Yeah, because I can see this tiny speck of cable that popped up. Yeah, so let's try and read now. Furnace open. Yep, yeah, there you go. Immediately. Good. Now let's write that to the advanced furnace. Not airlock, not airlock. Advanced furnace. Good. And we will write to the value open. Is there an open? Open. Yes. Good. Check it. Okay. Activate it. Activate this one. So 
when I press activate, it should hopefully activate. When I press open, ah, it opens there. Good. So it seems to be working correctly. All right. Then I guess we will have to secure some sort of a test, won't we? But also, we are still not 100% operational. We need to, the hash writer to be able to write to the hash, and we need to be able to... Yeah, so let's... Let's take out the logic reader or writer again. I have to check. Logic writer. Yes. All right. So you logic writer shall be reading You shall be reading, all right, like that, like that. Just first hook it up so that we don't have problems later. There we go. Straight one, yeah, connected, cool, and just cable here, good. Then come back here and let's start take our tool. So. You, Sunshine, let's rename you first. All right, we'll call it Furnace On Switch. Yes, because we need to be able to turn on the furnace in the first place, because this one has a flip switch. And we will be reading for that shoot bin, this guy. Shoot bin, okay, let's rename that. shoot bin internal because we have two shoot bins and that's the problem we have internal and external shoot bins so we want when we open and fire up the internal shoot bin then it basically turns on the furnace so furnace open furnace activate why does it not want to read the shoot bin Oh, right, because it's a writer. It doesn't read the values because shoot bin, it's supposed to be read. It doesn't input actively the signal. Okay, that would mean that we basically would need uh, also the logic reader. Let me just double check again. I mean, the switches and everything are meant to be read. However, the switch on the um, logical furnace, you have to specify what exactly is that you're reading exactly. So, yeah. Right. So that's why we need a logic reader. Okay, let's place one then. Logic reader. There we go. Let's cable it up. Come on, oh, turn like this, perfect. And then we hook up this guy. There we go. And then we need two corners and I think we will be good. Here's one and here is the other. Oh, no, that side, that side, good. All right, so logic reader, you, mister, shall be reading the shoot bin. Come on. No readable devices? Well, because Genius hasn't connected the input. I tend to do that a lot. Sorry. There we go. Now let's call it, let's check out the shoot bin reading. Wall light, no. Sensor, no. Furnace, no. Shoot bin internal, good. And you will be reading the value on, I think, if there is an on. Power, open, on, yes, good. So when I turn this on, it should say state one. Yeah, it is. And when I close it, it stays zero, perfect. So you will actually replicate the value of that switch onto furnace. 
we just have to rename this guy to shoot on reader there we go so you're reading if the shoot is on and if it's on you shall read that value shoot on reader good and you will put it on advanced furnace on switch so advanced furnace come on advanced furnace there we go and then value on not open oops yeah wrong I think I've placed it on the wrong value not open but on yeah I need to change that one yeah that one now I should be correct yes it fires up it does show some error but it doesn't really matter as long as it show fires up I guess it's okay now good so maybe we should start melting something to actually give it a go uh, right now we are not we have not yet connected the inputs and the output pumps I mean we have connected the output uh, gas valves but we didn't connect the input uh, and we haven't set remote controls for the pump that most likely will be coming in the next episode however what I'm thinking is, uh, after I got rid of you know the food and uh, water problems, that we should be probably smelting something. So I'm going to go briefly outside. Let me see if I can find something to smelt first. Gold, yes. And maybe copper, huh? Gold is hard and notoriously hard to smelt and it takes forever to smelt. So let's take gold and let's take copper. It would be fun just to smell those two. We will not be making alloys just yet because I don't have the need for alloys at the moment. So let's just... The only alloy I have the need for is Invar and uh, that one requires some precise regulations. So that's why I'm thinking I'll probably skip it for the time being. And also this uh, furnace can now be operated from inside and outside because we have an external chute which we will use now to dump in the volatiles and oxides and if we ever need to we can actually use that chute also to dump the ores inside so yeah nice one entrance for furnace which can be operated inside and outside perfect there we go now let's take the okay not the kit furnace well i can store it but i want to be taking oh and iron sheets i can store so easy to get sidetracked in this game okay oxides now let's move the oxides split one two three and we'll dump those three in the external chute which will then propagate it inside perfect and then let's go inside because we want to test the remote operation of the remote furnace right so all right let me just dump the furnace and the unnecessary stuff in here there we go and let's do some smelting shall we all right so uh, first turn the furnace on hit on a couple of times pressure is there dropping i guess we have to hit uh, activate several times because 153 kpa maybe a couple more I've forgotten how many times we have actually put the temperature is still minus 57 we have to melt the ore so right okay a couple more perhaps I'm just checking to see that everything works okay now that it's 8000 megapascal we end dropping 
Okay, let's put in the gold. And look at that, ingot gold. Hit it out. There we go. Then we put in the copper. Yeah, I'm guessing the pressure is dropping because I have the... Okay, pull it out. And there we go. Beautiful. All right. So, to me, that looks... It's, is it working fantastic? I'll tweak the input and output pumps later on, but... For all I care, this is working very, very satisfactory. So with that thing in mind, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Like if you like the video, hit subscribe, and I shall be seeing you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off from Furnace.